Hey, what's up guys? Russia Ukraine war. Here is all the crisis unfold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tensions between the two countries have been simmering for months, with Russia massing troops near Ukraine. The world's worst fears came true when Vladimir Putin declared war on Ukraine in a televised address on Thursday, February 24, calling it a military action. Vladimir said it is aimed at quote unquote demilitarizing Ukraine and came in response to threats from Ukraine. He claimed his goal was to protect people subjected to bullying and genocide and aim for the quote unquote demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. However, there has been no claim of genocide in Ukraine. It is a vibrant democracy led by a president who is Jewish. It has been said that the roots of this current crisis grew from the breakup of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union break up in the early 90s, Ukraine, a former Soviet Republic, had the third largest atomic arsenal in the world. The United States and Russia worked with the Ukraine to denuclearize the country. And in a series of diplomatic agreements, Kyiv gave its hundreds of nuclear warheads back to Russia in exchange for security assurances that protected it from a potential Russian attack. However, those assurances were put to the test in 2014 when Russia invaded Ukraine. Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula and backed a rebellion led by pro-Russian separatists in the eastern Donbass region. It has been alleged that Vladimir has been fixated on reclaiming some semblance of empire lost with the fall of the Soviet Union. Ukraine is the central of this region. Vladimir has said that Ukrainians and Russians were quote-unquote one people, a single whole, or at least would be if not for the meddling of outside forces that has created a wall between the two. So the prospects of Ukraine and Georgia joining NATO has antagonized Vladimir, at least since George W. Bush expressed support of the idea in 2008. The 1998 U.S. ambassador to Ukraine Stephen Pfizer said, quote, It drove the Russians nuts. It created expectations in Ukraine and Georgia which then were not met. And so, that just made the whole issue of enlargement a complicated one. End quote. So let's dive into NATO. What is NATO? NATO is an acronym. It means the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It is a military alliance formed in 1949 by 12 countries including the US, Canada, the UK and France. Members agreed to come to one another's aid in the event of unharmed attack against any one member state. Its aim was originally to counter the threats of post-war Russia expansion in Europe. In 1955, Soviet Russia responded to NATO by creating its own military alliance of Eastern European communist countries. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, a number of the former Warsaw Pact countries switched sides and became NATO members. The alliance now has 30 members. No country can join the alliance without the unanimous buy-in of all 30 member countries and many have opposed Ukraine's membership, in part because it doesn't meet the conditions of democracy and rule of law. Now all of this has put Ukraine in an impossible position. An applicant for an alliance that wasn't going to accept it while irritating a potential opponent next door without having any degree of NATO protection. One of Russia's demands before the invasion was that Ukraine should never be allowed to join NATO, something the alliance refused to agree to. Russia fears NATO has been encroaching on its territory by taking on new members in Eastern Europe and that admitting Ukraine would bring NATO forces in its backyard. On December 7, 2021, 
U.S. President Joe Biden warns Vladimir Putin that, quote, strong economic and other measures will be taken if Russia invades Ukraine, end quote. Ten days later, Russia presents proposals to limit U.S. and NATO influence on former Soviet states. On January 17, 2022, Russian soldiers start arriving at ex-Soviet country of Belarus for military drills, which Russia claimed were aimed at quote-unquote thwarting external aggression. On January 19, U.S. announces an extra $200 million in security aid to Ukraine. On January 24, NATO asks soldiers to be on the standby and send ships as well as fighter jets to reinforce European Eastern defenses. On January 26, the US refuses to close the NATO door on Ukraine with the alliance, stating that several of Russia's security demands are quote unquote unrealistic. On January 28, Vladimir Putin says that the West has ignored quote Russia's fundamental concerns regarding NATO's expansion and has strike weapons systems near Russia's borders." End quote. So you could say the Russian-Ukraine crisis that is happening now is a continuation of the one that began in 2014. 